Hi there. Well, today I'm going to uh, try just something a little bit different. Again, this is a pair of lovebirds. These are parrots from the parrot family. Very colourful. I chose these from a photograph. There's many of these about out there that you can uh, work from. And the main colours here are yellow, orange and green. And then I'm going to have fun trying to make it look like some sort of feathers of sorts. So I've just got to basically go for gentle st strokes. Um, at the moment, you've just got to be subtle with uh, one of the lightest yellows that you can find. And uh, under the lights, I can barely see this colour. Yellow is, isn't a great colour for looking at. And yet, at the same time, it can hide a multitude of sins. It really can. So all the areas that I'm covering in yellow now are the areas that, I, I suppose, like the undercoat, really, of any paint. Well, it is definitely an undercoat of sorts. So that all different pigments show through on the end product. I'm putting a piece of paper down under here so that I don't actually smudge anything. And I will do as time goes on, because I always do. I forget about that piece of paper and then my hand runs over the colours and then starts coming out onto the paper. So I'm sort of going a little bit heavier in some of the areas here just uh, to, to make it, you know, to, to just give a few streaks here and there, running now with um, more of an amber colour. I've looked on YouTube and there are some people that can really make these pencils talk. They really can. And it puts me to shame. But I like to have a go all the same. The more I'm playing around with them, the more I'm liking them as well. And there's various different types of pencil out there. These are the RTs, uh, expert pencils. And they have a, a light fast rating on every single one of them. If they have one cross, it's, it, it can... Uh, it's it's extremely good in, in which case it could uh, last up to a uh, hundred years and I'm assuming that means you can have it outside in uh, direct sunlight for up to a hundred years if it's got two it can any be any be anything was it from 25 to 50 years and if it's got three stars on it I think it goes no more than three stars um, or three crosses rather on it then that's uh, uh, was it something like about uh, something five to 25 years which is pretty good really but of course if you're keeping them in a dark and cupboard or in a book or something like that and they don't really get to see much of the light of day then maybe hundreds of years so the best uh, set of colors you can get are either the Karen Dac or the Prismalo Prismalo any of those And the more I put of this on, the more of a waxy finish comes on it. And in some ways that can be quite good and pleasing to the eye. And in other ways it, it can be a bit of a, a problem because as you're building up, it's making it more difficult to put other pencil strokes over the top of that. But it's something I'm sort of kind of working with here. It looks like I've given them sort of like... Um, the Three Stooges hairstyle there. That's going to change as we go. It better do anyway. I'm sure it will do. It's kind of, I suppose, really, when you're doing it, it's kind of like having faith in what the, the end product's going to look like by continuing and not giving up at this point and thinking, this is not going where I want it to go. But as it starts to build up, and as I said before, there's a point when there's a, a no return that you are going to carry on with this and see it through. Um, and something I notice nowadays more so than I used to is the ache in my hand after a while of, of doing some of this you, you, especially as you start pushing any pressure down as you start going through to some of the other uh, later stages at the moment I'm, I'm okay but as, uh, as it goes I guess it's good for you really I used to have some of that score and used to do things like handwriting and things like that and the teacher said that was that's there's nothing wrong with that, but maybe it's just muscles you're using, and you strength those up, so that's not too bad. 
so we're now applying a little more to the yellow now as you can see as you start filling in the uh, the tooth of the paper so to speak and you don't leave unless of course you want white to be in there any white to be in there but um, once you start filling that up with uh, various different colors and different uh, shades and, and uh, undercoats and overcoats and more overcoats and everything uh, it starts to take on a completely different feel to the whole thing I'm trying to not use too much in the way of black pencil especially for the outlines and everything and obviously we want it to look as, as near to natural as possible and the further back you move to my drawings I suppose the more natural it looks the much further away you know like um, if you go to the other side of about a uh, hundred meters away and look the wrong end through a telescope I guess it would probably resemble the real thing <laughs> I'm gonna add that light green down here now it's almost a luminous lime green isn't it there um, and unless you want uh, any of the white to show through uh, I leave it white there is a white pencil with this and uh, I, I, I don't get a great deal of joy from it except for kind of helping to mix in other colors but to actually get a white out of it I, I'm not having a lot of luck but I, I'm pretty certain that when I used the Karen Dac many years ago that when I wanted to add a white over the top it did make a difference even if you you wetted the uh, the end of the pencil so now going in for a more uh, a darker green now to, to add there it basically mimics pixels uh, sorry it uh, pigment sorry um, that you would find in feathers and things and how the color and the lighting would actually hit it these are wonderful animals to work on and the colors there are that they you you really do find the these colors on the real thing itself is incredible colors aren't they it's not that I don't have I, I, I still love all the ordinary birds with the ordinary colors um, but these are just absolutely amazing aren't they yeah, it'll be wor worth working on a few more of these uh, maybe with different types of uh, different sets of pencils and try them and see how they fare against each other you try and do the best you can don't you really but there is a point when I do tend to find myself speeding up just a little bit more than I should do so these were put together in two sections and I can certainly tell you the first section because that's what it said on my camera was two hours and 40 minutes and then it shuts off and then I continued the following night to to uh, finish it off. So I would say all in all, probably, don't laugh, probably about four hours worth of work. Now I'll bet you there are people out there that will probably spend 10 hours, 20 hours on probably the same subject and they would come up with something far, far more superior. They might spend even more time than that. And they just work with these just very light, extremely light strokes all the time, where you can just hardly notice any changes whatsoever. I'm going to add a bit more yellow around here just to really bring that um, that out more. More of a sort of a what would you call it? A lemony yellow mixed with an amber yellow. I actually wanted the the orange round on the breast area to be a little bit more subtle than that. Uh, so I'll have to think about that next time when I do one. Um, there I'm I'm using hmm, I'm using the black pen and not not a real great problem with it, but I shouldn't really really overuse it. So let's uh, let's call that a day on the black black pencil there. I should be using another darker colour to, to get around that. But when you're using the extreme black it can 
maybe add a bit too much to it that you don't want to be added to it. Well, that's basically the the birds themselves virtually complete, and I just simply need to now work on the on the claws. And of course the branch that they're standing on as well. Like so many times before when, and a lot of people do this as well, when you start working on something, you sort of feel like, yeah, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do, and leave it just like that. And it's, it's, it's unfinished because you feel that there's nothing more that you can do to it. You actually feel, well, what can I do? And then you probably kind of try and shortcut around it and just simply black in the, the claws and everything or just simply paint them with one single colour. I don't think the claws have... Well, I don't know, let, let's see. They're okay-ish and they are grey as well. They're okay-ish. They're not brilliant. Not by a long chalk. Just a lot of fun to work with. I really, really, ideally, you need to keep sharpening that pencil there, and that's when you'll notice because these are soft leads, and you will notice that in these particular ones that you will be sharpening them quite constantly, and they will soon get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then I'll be ordering a pencil extender on Amazon to use the stubs of them yes you can get pencil extenders and I guess that uh, if you happen to be using one color more than others that will go down rapidly and I don't think they sell these separately I think things like Prismalo and Carandac they will sell those colors and numbers of the pencils that you want separately which is a good thing But uh, I noticed uh, one particular colour I looked at, which had gone down quite. Was, I've lost about uh, was it a quarter of it almost, and that was the chocolate brown for some reason. Um, but I did notice, it, rather than purchase the 120 set, that they do still have a chocolate brown. Is it in one of the smaller sets, the 24 or 48 set, which is going to not cost you quite so much? So if you find that you are using the more popular colours in your set and they are the same colours that they have in the smaller sets then rather than uh, buy a completely brand new large packet just get the smaller one and then that will supplement your uh, your larger pack not sure about the white area that, that's showing there I think I'm going to cover over that in a moment Yeah, I mean, ideally, as people will tell you, you really need to keep them reasonably well sharpened. It's nice to see the texture in there, and the texture from the paper actually adds dimension to it as well. It creates some sort of realism there. So yeah, these are from the parrot family, as you can tell. They're sort of like the lorikeets. We have like sort of like is it the green versions of these um, not uh, not too far away from uh, when they fly all over around uh, our areas and there we go a pair of lovebirds Red, orange, and green. That's, uh, that's very colourful, isn't it? Thanks very much for watching. Do subscribe so you're up to date with all my latest. I'll see you all again very soon on YouTube. Thanks very much again. Cheers. Bye.